Hi, I'm Bob Carr. At the Give Something Back Foundation, we focus on higher education and its transformative effect on young lives, especially for those who have faced adversity. And that's why we're proud to support the important educational programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Valley National Bank, MagnaCare, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Give Something Back Foundation, providing mentors and scholarships to help Pell Grant eligible students go to college and graduate in four years debt free. New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation. ShopRite Supermarkets. And by Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got, you got this? Here it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> when you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato on the campus of Bergen Community College. Behind me, you're seeing an interesting facility. This is uh, the Bergen Community College Health Professions Teaching Center. This is the product of something that came out of what was called the healthcare. Uh, Higher Education Bond Act. A few years ago, the voters of New Jersey went to the polls and they decided that they would make an investment in higher education infrastructure. I know people don't like to talk about it. It's not a sexy word, but what does it mean? It means that for years in the higher education community, uh, they did not invest in new buildings. Money wasn't there. The voters said, you know what, we need to do that. So uh, the voters said yes. And so what did that mean? It, it meant that many millions of dollars were put into this pot competitive process took place and many institutions of higher learning competed for those dollars and uh, Bergen Community College won uh, that competition and this building behind us is the product of that. So inside you have these smart classrooms, you have these learning labs with simulated uh, situations where learning is going on, where there's education taking place, where frankly the future healthcare professionals of tomorrow are being trained. And that's what's taking place here. So today we're talking to the leaders who are a part of making this happen. And you'll find out from them why this is so special and why it's gonna have an impact on uh, the healthcare of this community and beyond. All that taking place today. We are pleased to be joined by the president of Bergen Community College, uh, Dr. Kay Walter. Kay, behind you, this extraordinary building, this uh, teaching center, the Health Professions Integrated Teaching Center, is the product of what and what will it mean? Uh, Steve, this is a product of the great GO Bond uh, that the taxpayers of New Jersey voted um, three years ago to allow higher ed in New Jersey really to upgrade their facilities so that we could train students in state-of-the-art um, types of professions really to grow our economy here. Um, this is our Go Bond project and it's the Integrated Health Professions Building that will train health professionals uh, for Bergen County. Talk about what's going to go on in there. We're actually going to be shooting, uh, describing you can describe all you want, but we're actually going to send our, our crew inside, our great team's going to go inside and actually try to show you visually what is going on in there because the labs are, are, are very hands-on. Um, the work that's going to be going on is very hands-on because you're teaching people how to be ready for the healthcare jobs of tomorrow. Exactly. Um, as you know, we have full simulation labs in there. Describe what that means. Um, we have... in. Uh, you would say dummies. Uh, they look like real people. They respond like real people. Um, you can give them shots. They deliver babies. They go through everything a human being goes through. Only our students can practice on them without hurting anyone. So we have full simulation labs all the way through the building. We have a dental hygiene clinic. Why is that important? The, whole, the oral health thing is huge. It's huge uh, in our county because there are a lot of people in our county who cannot 
afford simple cleaning of their teeth. So our facility provides community health care uh, for our community. So our students provide dental cleaning and other um, types of exams for our uh, for the community here. Let's talk about the fact that there's an educational component, there's an economic development, a jobs component here. I mean, how exactly do you see the role of this institution in all those three areas? Someone would say, it's a college, it's not supposed to be doing all those things. Well, we're not just a college, we're a community college, and part of our mission is to help with economic development in the communities in which we live. Um, we are really about producing the workers of tomorrow for our communities so that our communities can be healthy economically. Healthcare is the largest um, economic engine in Bergen County. It's one of the top um, resources that we have to grow our economy. I mean, that's where the jobs are. It's not only where the jobs are, it's where the high paying jobs are. And states and communities that really grow train their highest paying wage earners so that they can actually recruit those kind of industries to their communities. So let's be clear. So it's not enough to say, Dr. Walter, that that's where the jobs are. It's, it's also saying, wait a minute, if you don't prepare people, young, older, whatever age people, to compete for those jobs, those jobs are no good to us. They're no good to us and they disappear from our economy. They're going somewhere else. They go somewhere else. So in Bergen County, we've been fortunate that our county is really focused on health professions as an industry we want to see grow because we know that that's where the high paying jobs are that will help not only our economy but our community as well with the best health care possible as well as the state. So put this in context. <clears throat> a while back Dr. Walter made reference to the, um, the higher ed, I call it the higher ed bond act. Um, voters in the state of New Jersey a couple years back actually voted on um, whether um, this, the state would put money into infrastructure, into building like this. And certain colleges, once that was passed by the voters, were fortunate enough to receive those dollars. Help people understand, doctor, how once that was passed, this institution got some of those dollars to do this. How did that happen? It's all a process. Uh, there was a state granting um, program, so we applied for the grant. Competitive very competitive. Um, we had about a month to put the grant together, which is remarkable in itself. Everyone here uh, pitched in. We were, you know, spent lots of sleepless nights collecting data, writing the grant. To do this? To do this for our community and for our students. And the whole idea was to say, look, so I don't want to make the case for you, but as I understood it, the whole idea was to create infrastructure that did not exist that needed to exist to allow for institutions of higher learning to do things that they had never done before, correct? That's correct. And the folks, the taxpayers here in New Jersey thought that was important. But if they had said no, this would, if the voters of New Jersey said no, you're not getting that money, we wouldn't be here today. Is that a fair assessment? Because you didn't have the dollars. Uh, we don't have the dollars and we would not be here today. But they did say yes because they do care about the state and they care about our communities being successful. Prediction for over the next few years. We're looking actually behind us. We're going to be talking to some of the uh, terrific graduates here. What do you see over the next few years for the young men and women who will be graduating from this uh, terrific program? I see them working in our healthcare industry here in Bergen County, making a great contribution to the community, but also making a great contribution to their families, being able to support their families with high wage jobs and being great citizens um, with their opportunities. They're able to really look at the American dream because of this facility. Good day for higher ed. Great day for higher ed, great day for Bergen County, great day for New Jersey. We're here with the county executive of Bergen County, Jim Tedesco, usually dealing with fiscal challenges, but today he's here in front of the Health Professions Integrated Teaching Center at Bergen Community College. A good day, Mr. County Executive? A great day.
Because? Because this is one of the jewels of Bergen County. The county was, was uh, very happy to partner with the state of New Jersey on funding this. Yeah, explain to folks, because there are, uh, I guess, 20 or 22 uh, county community colleges. And so while they're in virtually every county, um, the state played a role because the voters approved the Higher Ed Bond Act, which a lot of the money for this building behind us that you'll be seeing inside came from those dollars, but the county was involved to explain that to folks. So we, we take the position that education is very important. So we decided to help allocate funds, capital dollars, towards this construction project with the state of New Jersey. And today we're here to reap the benefits of, of that commitment to education here in Bergen County and to, the, and to the people of Bergen County. It's important. Break that down. So someone says, okay, you've got roads, you've got bridges, you've got uh, basic services. That's what you should be taking care of. Make the case that these are basic services and it was worth doing that. Basic services is education. How does it get more basic than that? You have to teach, you have to have educated people to go out into the world to do the things that you just talked about. So you need engineers, you need doctors, you need lawyers, you need professionals. You also need tradespeople. This school does it all. And that's what makes the beauty of this school so different than any other, any other educational col uh, community college in, in the state of New Jersey. That this college, this institution offers a wide variety of educational opportunities for everybody. And I believe that that is our mandate. And just to be really specific, um, Mr. County Executive, what will come out of this? These students will come out better prepared to do what? In, in many cases, they'll be able to walk right into the healthcare field and start working right now. Or they'll be able to move on to a four-year four institution with a degree. Or we're looking at, uh, as, and I don't know whether Dr. Walls talked about it, but we're looking at a four-year degree program potentially coming out of here, which again, allows students that have economic uh, challenges that's what community colleges are. They're that bridge. And it gives people with economic challenges the chance to get a high level of education and training in a, in a, in a, in a very cost-effective manner. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. We're here with one of the many people who really understand what's going on today in this building behind us, the, uh, um, this very special learning center, the teaching center. This is Dean Susan Barnard from the Health Professions Operations at Bergen Community College. Dean, let me ask you, there being a simulation center being talked about, smart classrooms, break it down. What's really going to be going on in this building, this health professions center that's going to make such a difference? Interdisciplinary learning. If you think about healthcare teams today, it's not one specialty over another. It's collaboratively that we, that we treat patients. Give me an example of that. So a patient comes in, you have a paramedic bring them in, you have a nurse, you have a radiographer, you have an ultrasound, and all or a sonographer, all of these people collaboratively take care of that patient. So how do you actually teach that? Well, each of the specialties have their own labs, and then we now have created an interdisciplinary teaching center. And in that teaching center, we have a labor and delivery, an ambulatory peds, a long-term care, and ICU, as well as an emergency room. The healthcare delivery, the landscape is changing dramatically, and so we need to prepare students for multiple venues in order to be able to practice. So what do they do? I'm trying, we're actually picturing this. By the way, our crew, when our crew goes inside, you'll see what it looks like. Um, what I'm fascinated by is the simulation lab actually gets students together. They've got these simulated situations where you play them out because you don't do it with real people, but it's as close as possible to what would really go on, which is really amazing teaching. It is, but it may happen in real in the real world. So what we're doing is in a controlled environment, creating the ability for students to not only uh, manage a situation of crisis or emergency, but also manage collaboratively together how they're going to treat those patients. So for instance, if we can, with the robotic mannequins, we can create in a controlled environment a safe zone for that student to learn how to manage a situation. That, that mannequin can talk, that mannequin's vital signs are able to be viewed on a monitor, just like it would be in a hospital or other situation. So, so excuse me for interrupting, Dean. So if there's, a problem, if there's a problem with that mannequin or the vital signs are off and something's happening, then the medical professional or the trained med or the medical professional for the future being trained, that 
that person has to react. Exactly. And so it's in that split second decision that in oftentimes, particularly in respiratory or in paramedic or in nursing, can be a matter of life. Life and death. And so rather than oftentimes when it's a rite of passage and each of the things our students learn, to react to that in panic, they're going to be able to manage that situation with a comfort zone that's created because we've put them in these controlled environments. And in these controlled environments, we control it. So whether they've saved that patient or whether that patient continues to be in crisis and that student has to continue mm -hmm. collaboratively with their team members, be able to, to take care of that, that situation. Smart classrooms, define. Smart classrooms give us the ability to bring in internet, to bring in um, traditional teaching methodologies. But what we have here is also the ability for classrooms that bring these students together in these smart classrooms, that they can collaborate on case scenarios, that it, it's not just about the computer case, on the it, it comes to life for the students. And in doing that, we are able to prepare students to manage patients' health. And it's all about a team. Last question. Um, we're going to be talking to one of the students uh, in just a few moments. What do you believe it will mean ultimately to the quality of health care that will be delivered to the citizens of this community? Mm -hmm. Already we are in many hospitals and, and ambulatory care settings and long-term care settings across our region. And what this is going to allow us to do is partner more with them. It'll allow us to partner with our clinical affiliates to not only manage our own students, but interact with our clinical affiliates to help them to be better prepared with today's technology and managing their own situations. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. We're here with our good friend, uh, John Galendek, who is the president of the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey. Yes, this is an academic, a higher ed, um, event people are celebrating here at Bergen Community College. But the question is, from a business point of view, why is the opening of this health professions teaching center so important? Well, this is critical for us, Steve, not for us at Commerce and Industry alone, but for the state of New Jersey and certainly the region. You know, one of our strengths historically that brings businesses to New Jersey and makes it an attractive place to start and grow business is a well-trained workforce. And so what what is represented behind us is the ability to train the next generation or next generations of healthcare professionals. And there's a wide range of um, professions that are going to be trained in here, I think as many as 17, that begin a certificate programs and go all the way through a full nursing curriculum. So people will say, hey, listen, we don't need government involved. We need to cut back government spending, get out of the way and let the private sector do it, which you and your colleagues often say. But in this particular case, this is a good thing. It is a good thing, and there's a real simple, uh, I guess, guideline that we use for where government should be and shouldn't. It's called the Constitution, and so uh, that's a good place to start. It is. That's our rule book, right? And so when we have K to 12 education, that's called for in the Constitution, and we have a system of higher ed that's supported by the Constitution as well. And so if you're going to do it, you have to do it right, and that's why we're so happy. And we supported the bond issue, which really explain that to folks. The Higher Ed Bond Act. It was about two and a half years ago. I, the state government had not invested in higher ed since I think 1980. And so it was a major investment that was really put on the ballot and the voters approved. The voters decided. The voters decided, which is probably the way it should be in most instances of major spending. And the result is that at most of our colleges and universities, it seems to be the season of ribbon cuttings. And here we are at Bergen Community College to open up a brand new facility, the result of that bond act, and investment in higher ed. This building has a potential to have academic higher ed uh, impact, uh, job impact, healthcare impact, big deal. It is a big deal. You know, we're blessed in New Jersey to have a really robust healthcare system. Uh, you look certainly in northern New Jersey, but throughout the state, excellent facilities to deliver healthcare. But there are gaps. There are gaps, certainly. Um, but again, I think I look on the horizon with, for example, the new medical school that's going to be created between Seton Hall and Hackensack University Medical Network. So this program here will certainly be able to feed into that as well. And so it really is part of a continuum of training so that as the delivery of health care in this instance, it gets a little bit more complicated, but in a good way, um, so that the folks that need the care can get it at the right level. Thanks, John. Thank you, Steve. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. We're here with uh, someone who knows all about oral hygiene. She is uh, Deborah Cook. 
uh, dental hygiene coordinator, Bergen Community College, and uh, there is a dental hygiene clinic here, but it's gonna be upgraded through this facility. Talk about what's going on and how it's gonna be improved. Okay, we have a brand new state-of-the-art 24 chair dental hygiene clinic here. Um, we're going to have all of our clinics here. We have two brand new labs, our dental radiology lab and our dental materials lab, as well as classrooms. And we're going to have an additional um, admissions program now that we have more chairs. And we're very happy to be moving into our new facilities, hopefully any day. So talk about that, Debbie. What impact does it really have on the oral health of this community? Well, we take care of anybody who comes to our clinic, um, children, adults, uh, seniors. Uh, many of our patients do come from the community as well as from faculty and staff and the students here on campus. We also have several areas that we go to outside of campus, for example, um, the Alpine Learning Center, the Epic School, um, St. Joseph's Medical Center. So there's a lot of other areas where we're also um, taking care of patients. And those patients are also welcome to come here as well. And training younger people and others for jobs that they otherwise would have a hard time competing for? Well, we're, we are educating them to become registered dental hygienists. Yes, it is a very demanding program. They do have to take board examinations uh, upon graduation in order to be licensed, but we are getting them ready to be professionals and to work in the community. We have two students who are seniors about to graduate. We have Chris and Gil studying? X-ray. And? X-ray. X-ray, right? And what does this day mean to you guys, other than the fact that you're graduating, and what does this school mean to you? It means a lot. I mean, we've spent the last two years together. Uh, it's kind of nice to see that they're putting more money into the medical programs here. Um, it's a shame that we won't be able to see much of it because we're leaving soon, but we'll come back and visit. It's good to see that the rest of the freshmen are going to be able to use it someday. Talk about the impact. I mean, you've seen the building. You've seen the smart classrooms. You've seen the technology. You've seen the impact it will have. Yeah, it won't benefit you directly, but as students who have gone through here, what impact do you think it would have on the quality of the education that their, your colleagues will be getting in the future? And the impact of the healthcare delivery that they will be delivering? Well, I think with better technology, it just helps, you know, the learning process. So with that, you know, it will probably advance, you know, a lot faster, you know, it'll be a lot easier to understand things. Why'd you guys even go into this field for you? Uh, I mean, I went through college once to get a music degree. Didn't work out too well, and you know, medical field, Always, everyone's always going to need people in the medical field. So, um, when checked out a couple, figured this would be a really good choice, and I've, I've fallen in love with it. And you? Um, originally, I started it for the money, you know, the consistency of the salary. But uh, over time, you know, I grew to love it. You know, you have to be compassionate and be helping, you know, others. You know, and you have to have that heart. You know, you really do. We're here at uh, Bergen Community College talking with uh, Holly Shapizzi, Assemblywoman Holly Shapizzi, who had a strong hand in uh, the Higher Ed Bond Act. Big deal because? It's an amazing example of what we can do to help our workforce, help the women in our state. Um, this is a new health building in which we have a majority of women employed in those positions. And so this enables people who are either going through midlife career changes, divorced women with small children who have to re-enter the workforce, or people who are coming out of high school who can't afford to pay $60,000 a year to go to college. This enables that entire population of people to immediately be able to enter the workforce as trained professionals at higher paying jobs, and it's an incredible resource. It's interesting because you're a Republican and you're a small, let's just say this, you're not a big government person, never have been. I talked to the county executive who's a Democrat and I asked him this question. I'm going to ask you as well. Um, folks who say, you know what, the role of government should not be to do this. It should be to do roads and bridges and not be involved in investing in programs like this. Devil's advocate question. You say... I say sometimes it is smart to do stuff like this. And while I am not a tax and spend type of um, elected official, I do believe that there is a place for government and certain funding programs. Something like this will give back to our taxpayers tenfold. How for, how, explain how that actually works for people. Okay. With respect to this particular building, at a time when the construction markets had softened, we put people to work in Bergen County. 
now that the building is up, it's a fraction of the cost of going to other colleges. You're allowing students to come in to graduate without boatloads of debt that they may not be able to pay off subsequently in the future. You're bringing them into our workforce. You're providing them with an, a living wage that they can get off of programs where a lot of people who are coming into the school have to rely upon public assistance because it's change of life, they've lost jobs, they're going through various things. And so it's, it's something where if you look longer term, it's a benefit to society that enables people to be self-sufficient and not reliant upon government in the future. Say someone would say, you know, the job of teaching health professionals um, why is it the job of a community college? It's an interesting question because the role of community colleges has often been questions. Question: Why is it the role of a two-year college? You can. And is the role of a two-year college changing? Role of a two-year college is changing, and in fact, a lot of people feel compelled to go to a four-year college, and they may not have to. And instead, as a society, we've kind of made people believe over the past two decades that you had to go to a four-year college in order to succeed. And instead, what we've seen is a whole generation of people who are still paying off debt. College costs continue to rise. And here's an opportunity for certification programs in which people are focused on learning their craft, coming out without the undue burden, some debt that people in four-year colleges are getting, and are trained professionals that can immediately enter the workforce. And it's almost like apprenticeship programs. Programs. So it's something that I believe in wholeheartedly. I sit on the foundation board of this college, and it's an incredible resource. Thank you. You're welcome. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Valley National Bank, MagnaCare, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Give Something Back Foundation, New Jersey Sharing Network, ShopRite Supermarkets, and by Choose New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey, and by HipNewJersey.com. Live hard, work hard, play hard. You're from New Jersey, and so are we. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Hi, I'm Peter Rooney. In 2006, I lost my father to renal disease. He was on the waiting list for a new kidney, but did not receive one in time. Unfortunately, so many like my father have lost their lives while waiting for a life-saving organ. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and by informing people about this important decision because you can make a difference and save a life.